lead, inspire, motivate, and empower. Welcome to Lead with DX, your guide to digital transformation in a complex world. Here are your hosts, Lars Jeppesen and Wasantha Wirakuni, the founders of Tech One Global and Enadoc. Hello, Vasanta. Hi, Lars. Is it good afternoon or good morning? Uh, good afternoon, of course. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And we have a very special guest today, Nikki. Good afternoon. Hi, bosses. Good afternoon. Hi, Nikki. How are you? Great. We are doing fine. So, uh, uh, Nikki is our chief people officer for the Tech One uh, Global Group. Um, newly appointed and uh, actually it's about high time that uh, that we have this function because we always say that our most uh, important asset is our uh, people uh, and of course we had a CFO for a long time managing our money and uh, uh, we didn't have a, a CPO managing our people or our people assets so welcome Nikki. Thank you so much, boss, for that. Thank you for the privilege to <laughs> take that responsibility for the global group. Yeah, so you're not new to our company. You have been with us in actually some of the most difficult time because you were uh, privileged to start your work as a um, uh, HR manager in Philippines, I think, how many days before the lockdown? Um, I was hired, boss, February 10 of 2020. So I think that was like almost one month before the lockdown. But so your I, first working day was when? February 10. Okay, so you had just one month to kind of live in a semi-normal, but that time... Yes. Uh, so so maybe, maybe you can just tell a bit about that experience because I think um, most organizations, most people I know uh, in leadership positions, their biggest challenge uh, during the pandemic was, of course, how we manage our people and uh, how we uh, can keep them productive. How can they work when they cannot come to the office? How can we help them to be safe? Uh, do they need anything from us? All of these kind of things. That was kind of the first thinking, right? And then second thinking was, what's happening to our business? And then a whole new kind of scenario came in is that, if the business is not going to work or if you are in a food business or in a hotel or if you are running an airline, suddenly you have to cut down, right? So, so many things must have gone through your head in those days. Can you just, you know, tell a bit about your experience as a new HR manager in that time? Yeah, I can still imagine, boss, how challenging it was because um, during that time, of course, I'm still new. So the challenge of getting uh, to know the people, no, the employees, which I will handle moving forward, is a challenge already. But come pandemic, we all work remotely. It's an uh, it's another challenge to deal with people, to get to know them, to establish the connection, the trust in a remote setup. Because I'm not seeing them. It's not that I don't want, but we had no choice. We were locked in our own homes, right? So mm. the challenge is how to really uh, get them together in this kind of uh, environment, which is really new to everyone, even to me. Mm. So what we did... Um, during that time, boss, we need to re-strategize because the strategies that we have been using or I have been exposed to for the past years prior to the pandemic is no longer applicable, will no longer work. So the, the key is really to be extra creative, to be to, to re-strategize, to do some research to also observe what's the best practice among the market during that time. But another challenge is no one is prepared for the <laughs> yeah. pandemic. I was just about to say, okay, what's the best practice in the last pandemic? Yes. But there was no last <laughs> pandemic, right? There was nobody who had that kind of experience before. Yes, uh, that's yeah. true. That's true, boss. So even though we can do some research, even though we can observe what other companies are doing, they are also not. They they also don't know what to do. We are in the middle of the pandemic, so that's the challenge. But uh, over time, of course, it's not 
a walk in the park, boss. No, it's not easy for everyone. Um, but I think we managed to really get through or navigate through that situation with the help of the leadership uh, and also the management. And not to mention, boss, during that time, this great resignation and other great great is coming into play, right? Because mm, yeah. Pe- yeah, people are at loss. Uh, they they don't know what to do. They are they are also um, like quite confused if tomorrow they have jobs, how they will be, how how they will get retained and everything. So those are part of the pandemic. But we started what we started doing at least in the Philippines, and then eventually we rolled it out across the comp across the the group or the company. First, we focused on improving the internal communications within the group or within the company. And very timely because even though it's quite challenging, we took the opportunity to provide more room for cross-functional collaboration. And we start recognizing, appreciating people. We start reaching out to people more often than what we used to or how we used to uh, in the office because during that time, of course, we are quite comfortable, right? Because we don't know that anytime soon pandemic will come. So mm. some some of the people, they might have um, taken for granted the, the, the value or the importance of really being connected, deeply, conne- deeply connected with the employees. So those are the things that we have done during the first few months of the pandemic. We provide more, more room for... Um, for, for growth and learning opportunities as well. We ran several programs on top of the wellness um, programs. We also made sure that uh, even though we are all working remotely, people are still connected. So the first initiative that we have done, if you can recall, Boss Lars, is our weekly town hall. Yeah. Right? We have been doing it. I think even before I joined the company, you have been regularly doing the town halls with the employees. But actually, no, actually, uh, you know, Frank, frankly, this is a pandemic uh, consequence. We oh. never had like a town hall for the whole company before. Maybe we had, you know, once or twice something, but not anything called a town hall. I don't even remember we had something. Maybe Vasanta, can you remember? Yeah, yeah we, we had the tool. We had the tool, but we never... No, no, we had the tool, but I don't remember we ever had a call for every employee, which is... Yes. Uh, 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 and actually, it was not for all employees, right? We started out only because we have employees in many countries. Maybe you can talk a bit about that later, but but right now we are just talking about like kind of your your almost onboarding experience, right? But but in that... So we have employees in different time zones and, and uh, we started to deal with the... Philippine time zone first. Also because Philippines was the first country, actually it was the only country of all the countries we were working with or we are working with that had a full lockdown. Uh, and in those days, everybody else was still going to the office. Mm. Then some com- some some countries had a semi-lockdown, but uh, there was never anybody else who had the same lockdown in our region as Philippines. And uh, so it was more severe here. I mean, uh, 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 so, so, so we started this town hall, and if you if you can talk about things that are after the pandemic still there and still I think is important to our companies, some of the things we started in the pandemic, right? Mm. So, so I, I sorry I kind of interrupted your your thinking there or your 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 talk, but I always like to say give me five examples, but I don't want to put you on the spot because uh, you, you we did not prepare for this. We are just you know talking. But if you could at least tell me one or two things that that uh, uh, really was introduced or happened during the pandemic that you could see as a as a positive thing, you know, what is the the positive things that happened in the pandemic that we can take out now here? I, I mean, while you're maybe thinking, I can just think that you know, a thing like we talk about a lot is empathy in our organization. But I think it was. Mm-hmm always there to some level but it was like more outside it was more evident it was more obvious in the pandemic and after the pandemic it's still there so maybe at least it taught us to think more in other people's situation because otherwise in those days we could not manage things right i mean if you cannot put yourself in somebody else's situation how they are facing challenges you know some 
uh, 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 parents uh, living in an apartment with two kids or three kids who cannot go to school and have to work from home in a small room. And uh, in the middle of the summer in Philippines, you know, from March, April, May, these kind of things, if you cannot put yourself in their situation and kind of work with them on that on that side, then you're not going to get anything good out of it. And it, it has brought us into this situation today that I think we we are thinking more people first mm. now, right? So yes. now you had a chance to think. Now now you'll leave it to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more, boss. I think the pandemic really was a wake-up call for all of us, no? for all employers, especially here in the Philippines, to, to realize the value of their employees, of their people even more. Mm. Uh, and one of the, if you'll ask me, boss, what are the, what what are the things or my re- realizations? No, um, I think during pandemic 2020, uh, we we were able to successfully pull off the work from home, or the work from yeah. Let's say eventually it became work from anywhere. But during the the 2020, we we're able to pull pull off work from home while others are still thinking what to do, um, while other companies are still uh, measuring the performance of their employees with the amount of uh, or with the frequency of uh, of their work in the office or report on site because we don't have a choice during that time right boss but we have still given that um, opportunity and also our trust to our employees that they can still deliver uh, at the comfort of their home and up until now this is something that we are still continuously providing to our employees correct boss Lars we mm-hmm. are still giving them that flexibility to work from home or right now we are on a hybrid setup, right? So the trust, I think we have built it over time, uh, especially during the pandemic. And we're very fortunate because our employees, they are not taking it, taken advantage of it or even taken has taken it for granted. Uh, I can see during the pandemic, boss, that they have really, um, they, they are really genuine giving back to the employer because not, all employers, especially here in the Philippines, uh, can give that flexibility to their employees, right? Mm. Yes. Yeah. We, and, I mean, we had the tool with Microsoft Teams, which was, I guess, if you look at it today and look at it at that time, it was still, uh, uh, you know, early and, and uh, a lot of things we didn't do. But it kind of, I mean, for our company and for most other company, it, 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 fast forward the digital transformation, right? Yes. I mean, we can just look at in the core of your businesses, your documents and your document management system, something that has kind of been, okay, we'll do it tomorrow. Uh, we'll do it next month. We'll do it next year for a long time, right? And suddenly in the middle of the, of, in the start of pandemic, we realized when we have not digitized our document, our own document in a company, you know, where we are promoting that, uh, we 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 could not get it done finally, but now we have realized that in the pandemic the value of that. And now mm-hmm. the first thing we have done, you know, when we could get back to the office, was to make sure everything is scanned and everything is uploaded Upload and used. It. And and uh, we implemented digital signing with our EVIA sign and all this stuff. Uh, uh, you know, things that we are benefiting from today, right? Yes, true, boss. And Teams is very instrumental. Uh, or was very instrumental during that time because yes. uh, through Microsoft Teams, we were able to conduct our uh, town hall meetings, right? Our yes. Kahoot, which up until now we have been doing. Yeah, Kahoot, we didn't mention that earlier. What is Kahoot? Yeah. Kahoot is actually, this is a learning platform, right, boss? <laughs> You're the one who mentioned it. It's not a it. gaming platform. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's not really a gaming platform, but um, we were able to use that platform or tool to um, gamify no? or to, to conduct games for our employees. Uh, and to, you know, the idea actually, just to share with everyone, the idea of the Kahoot came from Boss Lahiru. So he's the one who's really familiar with Kahoot. And then he just shared with me and then I explored. Uh, and then we found out that we can actually uh, utilize this tool to create uh, that fun environment among our employees through a short game every Friday. 
so that the week will be capped off uh, with with some fun, right? People can meet each other because from Mondays to Thursday or Thursdays or Mondays to Fridays, we have been working from uh, our own homes, right? We don't see each other. We don't see yeah. our employees. So we took advantage of that platform to really uh, create that environment among our employees, a, a casual environment, because we have been doing a lot of meetings in a week, but those are formal, right? Mm, we yes. cannot, yeah, we cannot even laugh or we cannot even say, you know, uh, some some things or share with, with our employees. So this really is a, a great platform, I would say. And going back to Teams Boss, uh, the reason why I would say that is that that was really um, instrumental during pandemic is because uh, through that platform we were able to do everything, even the yes. virtual virtual coffee chats. If you can recall, postlers during the pandemic, uh, we have encouraged our employees to really uh, turn their camera on and then have this like 10, 15 minutes virtual coffee chats with a random. A group of uh, with a random employee on a weekly basis to maintain that connection even on a virtual set uh, setup. So, so your experience in terms of delivering the bad message, the wrong message, or the tough one. How, how what did you do, Nikki? You know what? What did you experience in that? Because it was it was a situation that um, um, it, it it was difficult for all of us, right? At um, sitting at our level. Uh, we had no idea, you know, how to even, uh, whether we'll be able to collect cash and the cash flows would be there or not and how long this uh, pandemic would go uh, because everybody was uh, having a forecast. And then uh, we, all of us, I remember that, you know, we had to go down and we have to say, okay, we are operating with limited amount of cash so we may have to even sacrifice part of the salary. And uh, But the, this is one of the most difficult things to communicate. So how... Uh, you know, how, did was there any tools for you to uh, that helped you to uh, to communicate this well? Or you you mean, boss Vasanta, the the tough news to the employees? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, in terms of communicating it to the employees, the only tool that is really helpful during that time was would be via Microsoft Teams, right? So through through this platform, boss, we're able to. Um, connect with our employees one on one, and then share with them uh, also what's really happening within the organization because transparency is very important, especially during that time. So we that, on, by that uh, by through through that we're able to communicate and really um, create strong connection or um, communication with our people. We reach out to them one on one. And then we try to really be transparent on what's really happening. I on remember, the ground. I remember you were running surveys and uh, you know asking questions about you know their surrounding and the other issues. I think even including the the social environment and you're trying to map and understand what uh, what we need to do to overcome that. So I think uh, there are a lot more than what you are mentioning. You know, we have done. I think we have almost forgotten. You know what we mm. did. Isn't yeah, it? in terms of survey, boss. Yeah, you're you're correct. In terms of survey, we have run a lot of surveys, and we've utilized uh, some platforms like uh, Survey Monkey and also Microsoft uh, Forms to be able to get uh, to 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 the to to get the feedback of our employees and uh, put them into action or to address them immediately. So we've run. I think in a week we've run one or uh, two surveys just to understand the situation of our employees at home uh, if they are all okay even their relatives we check in with them fast forward a bit so first of all uh, when we hired you Nikki you are the HR manager right yes but then yes. during the pandemic we changed the name of the group to people and culture okay mm -hmm. so so and and then the the team in people and culture have grown dramatically from those days. Now we have quite a substantial, you know, in, in our group. That's that's why we need a leader, right? I mean, when there was one person in each country, that's fine. But now there's, I don't know, 15 or 20 people in, in our people and culture team that uh, needs to get direction and strategies and so on. Uh, so, so 
how did you see that transformation? And then we need to spend a bit of time also on a great place to work. But uh, let's talk about the transformation of the people and culture function first. Mm. Yeah, when I I think boss, when I first joined 2020, uh, there was like around five uh, people in HR globally, and in the Philippines there is only one. Uh, before we onboarded Bless, of course, no. So for quite some time we were two in the team managing end to end of HR in the Philippines. But over time, I think one of the uh, realizations also that. Uh, we we had during the pandemic boss is that we need people who will take care of our people right uh, because if they are not well taken care of then the the core value one of the core values that we have been promoting it will really be um, not put into practice right so what we did we have decided to really grow our people and culture team, not only in the Philippines, but globally. So right now, we have an average of two managing one country or one entity or managing the people so that they'll, they there will be enough manpower who will really look into the needs and uh, wellness needs of our employees. That's why we have also shifted, uh, like what you mentioned, boss, Lars, no, from HR manager, HR department to people and culture because gone are the days that HR uh, are just more into administrative type of work, right? Or clerical type of work or into paperwork. The pandemic really helped us realize that HR is more than just providing resources or manpower to the organization or Uh, organizing the compensation or benefits of the employees. It's all about retaining people. It's all about building connection, real connection with people. It's about taking care of them, not only uh, financially, but also mentally, emotionally, and also their overall well-being. That's why we shifted from from HR to people and culture because that is the real purpose or that is the real essence of HR to focus on people, to focus on culture, to continuously create that environment that embodies our core values, especially empathy. Very uh, uh, 2020 moment, I was on mute. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so, so with, with that, one of the other initiatives that we had during this time was Um, a great place to work. Yes. And uh, uh, can you talk a bit about that? Because I think that has been one of the tools we talked about Kahoot and Teams, but another framework I would say that we have been able to use. See, see uh, uh, when we say, oh, we are a great place to work, um, uh, it sounds like, uh, you know, it's an award that we got from somewhere, but yes. it was it was a process, right? It's mm-hmm. almost like when you say you're ISO certified or you're managing uh, things within a certain process, a uh, great place to work um, uh, is a certification process more than that and help us to basically guide with the framework, right? Yeah, true, true, boss. So just a little backstory uh, about the great place to work journey. No? So around two, three years back, well, this has started while we were discussing about our plans for FY20 uh, to 21. And then... One of the goals that was included is to be a great place to work for our people. So that is, of course, was no in line with our uh, culture, with our values. Because I know we know that the management is really determined to drive a people-first culture. But going back to our experience uh, in 2020, it's not a walk in the park, right? We are in the middle of the global pandemic. And then like what I have uh, mentioned earlier, the great resignation is coming into play and many more. So during that time, I only had one question at the back of my mind. How? How can how can we do that in this kind of virtual setup? But of course, focus on the goal. We need to get this done. Even though during that time, it was really... Um, it uh, it was really a question. So we started by surveying our employees internally to get a better understanding of their experiences at work. And 
surprisingly, the results that we got, those were really eye-opening. And instead of being reactive, we know that we have to take those insights to heart and really started implementing changes right away. Because the, the feedback from the surveys, if we don't take actions promptly, those are nothing, right? So what we did, boss, uh, we focused on first, like I shared earlier, improving the internal communication in this new setup. Because in the office, it's easy, right? You can just bump into someone and then say hi and then start the conversation in the pantry area, in the in the uh, hallway or everywhere in the office. It's easy. But this time, it's all 100% virtual. So we need to really strengthen our internal communication. And then we started really knowing our people, our employees, and then appreciating them, recognizing them for their contribution, providing more room for them to collaborate, uh, providing more learning opportunities for them. Bottom line, we need to make sure, or we have made sure that we take actions to address their concerns. Prompt mm. actions, yeah. And it wasn't long before we started seeing positive results. And we yeah. knew high level about this great place to work. Uh, the framework and then how they help the companies uh, to understand their culture and what what would be the direction moving forward to be a great place for everyone. And we knew that during that time, boss, we need this uh, framework to validate if we are really doing the right thing. Are we really doing it the right way or there's a better way uh, to do it? So we partnered with GPTW with Great Place to Work. We onboarded and then we started the journey. And then fast forward, year 2021, when we got first uh, certified with a score of 92% here in the Philippines. So we were right because GPTW really, the framework, the survey, the, the process is they will send a survey link to the employees. So us, of course, management has no direct um, influence no, or impact. We can only promote by encouraging our people to uh, take the survey and then we actually uh, encourage them to give their candid feedback, right, boss? We did not influence in any way because the intent is genuine for, for us to really know their insights, how mm. they feel about working in tech one, and what else should we improve because we know that there's so much growth. We can still grow and we can still improve our processes, our initiatives to make it better for everyone. So that's for the Philippines, at least, boss. Uh, shall we go for the, I mean, how we Yeah, I, I think, you know, we can maybe go more, more or less uh, uh, straight until today because now, uh, you know, with the effort and of, of uh, the people and culture team and the local leadership team, we have been a certified great place to work in all the countries where that program is supported. That means in Sri Lanka, uh, we have uh, three of our business units have been certified great place to work. Um, and we have the fourth one in Sri Lanka, which is our inner dog, was voted uh, uh, the best place to work. So uh, a notch up and uh, one of the best places to work in Asia uh, under this uh, specific category, software development in a certain size. And uh, we have uh, been certified in Bangladesh as well. And in Nepal, I think we are uh, in the process of getting certified this year. And this year's certification, congratulations, in Philippines, we were voted uh, uh, among the top 10 best places to work in the small business category in Philippines, which is an amazing achievement. Uh, uh, you know, I, when I say amazing achievement, I mean, uh, uh, of course, there's a lot of credit that goes to the people who are, uh, uh, you know, running this program, including yourself and the leadership team. But uh, beyond that, if it's not for the individual employee and their participation, and their engagement, it will not happen, right? Because, you know, the boss can drive something, but it needs to be driven by everybody in the company, isn't it? Yes, I agree, boss. Yeah. That's very true. That's why all credit really goes to our employees who supported this initiative yes. because it shows how how uh, badly they also want to create a great culture for not only for them but for their colleagues as well yes so so uh you know i 
always say when I talk to uh, uh, other business leaders or anybody really when we talk about you know our business, uh, uh, how's the market? Is it growing? You know who's your competitors? What about the new technology? All of these things. I I always say you know the 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 opportunities are out there. The clients are out there. We can we can win any clients that we aim for. The biggest challenge we have is to find recruit enough people. Uh, that and that's why it's so important that the people we have they stay with us because if 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 we are recruiting a lot of people for our growth, we cannot afford also to lose people who are already working for us, right? So yes. then you need to recruit not only the people you need for growth, but also the people who are leaving. So so we 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 really need to continue to focus on our employee uh, welfare or employee well-being and that's also a bottom up kind of thing it when 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 an employee have challenges or need something it should not come out in the exit interview right it should be an open day to day communication if there's something that they see that they find challenging they should be, we should have an environment where uh, people uh, 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 can come and tell anything to anybody without uh, uh, fearing that uh, they will be taken negatively, right? So we need to foster that culture. Yes, uh, to create that psychological safety among yes. our employees, boss. I agree. Uh, th- that is very important because great place to work anyway, boss, will be just a certification if we're not walk- uh, walking the talk, right? Yes. Yeah, but the main intention is really to dig deeper to understand where we can improve because as a company we are into this continuous growth in all yes. aspects boss right so it's really important to understand how we can get it to the next level that's why yes. uh in in the philippines boss you know uh when we when i first found out that we're part of that um best workplaces i, I don't know but the feeling is that I, I started feeling uh, this, uh, li- like I found myself yearning for something more, boss. Because we, yes, we are ranked nine, but it also tells something, right? That mm-hmm. we there's still more that we can do for our yes. employees, and maybe we are good for others, but there's still remaining percentage of our workforce whom we still need to nurture, right? There is yeah. still yeah, part of our initiatives that we still need to improve to get to that next level. So it's a challenge, but it's a good challenge for me, boss, because it also shows that the the feedback that we got from our employees are really genuine and not yeah. manipulated. Yes, I think I think that's very important. I mean, uh, it's it's not like a a, a fake uh, survey that yes. you can pay for or one of these awards that we get every single day. We get an email from this uh, 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 top CIO magazine. You know, have elected you to be the CEO <laughs> of the uh, you know the year, and uh, please pay one hundred and fifteen hundred dollars for our write up. Right. So this is not that kind of thing. And 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 actually, when we were participating in the event last week, the award ceremony, uh, you know the the uh the 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 atmosphere the drive the keynote speak was uh, you know so much uh, uh in in line with what we want to do now we are over time nikki and again i have to be the moderator so now we are at two years after the pandemic almost uh, to the date uh what's in store for us next year so for those people who um we, we follow kind of a different calendar year in our company. So our, uh, not a different calendar year, difficult physical year. So we start the financial year on April 1st, which is uh, tomorrow. So that means everybody is busy today, getting the last deals closed. Is any things happening? And then, uh, uh, you know, starting on a, a fresh uh, next week with the uh, uh, pushing for the next financial year. So in, in your view, from a people and culture uh, 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 side, what are the kind of things that you would make your priorities next year? And I think we have around five minutes. Yeah. Okay. So generally, five boss, minutes for the future and forty-five minutes for the past. That's what you call twenty. Hindsight <laughs> is twenty twenty, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, of course, boss. As a general, um, 
goal or objective from from our side it is our goal to have or to provide a greater positive impact for within our culture for our colleagues and friends and also for our future employees and this is i think uh, a very good opportunity since we're working um, as a group already so we can already start standardizing all the um, employee engagement activities for examples and all the initiatives that has a direct impact on our people and also we are we will be focusing on how to really um retain our existing workforce how to make them happy how to make them uh satisfied with our uh with with their culture and also with the with the environment and one of the goals as well is to attract more quality candidates uh and i think gptw will really help us elevate that experience both for our existing workforce and for our future uh workforce and um again boss i think as what the, their team says no onwards for all we aim to uh create a culture where everyone is involved not only a particular group of um entity or people but everyone in the company we 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 are committed to hear all their uh, suggestions and to promptly address their concerns as much as possible and and also last i think it is important to uh, recognize that uh, we managed to digitize uh, the cradle to the grave or, or basically from the uh, uh, planning employee recruitment planning up to the employee onboarding and as well as uh, when uh, when people leave you know everything is digitized now right so yes. I, I i guess i guess that is also uh, uh, part of our transformation which has helped a uh, nikia and a team to uh, to manage this one in a more effective way mm. yeah i mean as i i i, uh, I said when we started out that uh, you know this digital transformation was really fast tracked uh, by the pandemic it was uh, something that we always needed to do and always wanted to do but didn't uh, you know it was not a priority because our day to day processes works and we are there and we are in the office and so on but suddenly we were kind of thrown into the deep end and had to uh, uh, to to fix it so uh, that is one of the positive consequences of 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 uh, of uh, of the lockdown that we were able to kind of uh, uh, rebuilt or built some uh, stronger processes around all of this and digitize them as well. So um, there was so, one more thing, last you know that that happened during this time. Uh, previously, we were not being able to meet uh, people who are on, getting on boarded, you know, because we are six seven hundred people company and uh, people come and uh, go. Uh, one of the thing uh, I realized within this period was I today I meet everyone who comes in. You know, we have no, even though, even though, um, even though, uh, you know, we are now working from office and in a hybrid mode, uh, all on, I, I have an onboarding session with everyone who joins the company, mm. but we never had a chance to do that one before. So I think that's a great uh, tra- transformation that we had. So we at least know from the first day of someone who works with us, uh, will be able to talk to uh, talk to us. I think we have another program which is coming up, right? You know, meeting all the. Uh, the sea level and uh, in in a weekly call or monthly call. So I I think we have another program that we are coming up, right, Nikki? Yes, yes, boss. Uh, this April. Uh, I think. Uh, thank you for bringing that up, uh, boss Basanto. No, with a lot of uh, initiatives that we have <laughs> conducted, boss, we cannot really mention everything. But that one is really a good initiative that we have all supported. We have all started, uh, because the new hire really feel welcome already on their first day because not everyone, not new hire meets the C-level boss, right? So here, through digital transformation, you're right, we're able to uh, give that personal interest or personal touch to the new, between the new hires and also the the management level and this april we are we are running this new initiative to gather every new hires or all new hires in one call and then meet with you with boss Ashin and also with, with with boss lars yeah i think i look forward to that and and uh, you know um i think it's important that uh, we continue to uh, have a very 
direct line with every employee from uh, everywhere in the company. And uh, even as we are now mostly back to the office, we need to continue some of the uh, good things that we have been doing during the last part, part, uh, past years, uh, not to forget them while we get busy, you know, uh, going for meetings in person and traveling and stuff. So we retain some of that culture that we have built. It's very important. So um, I I think we are now well over time and it was a very inspiring and interesting uh, conversation and good to hear uh, uh, from you, Nikki. So thank you very much for joining us. And if there's something that comes to your mind uh, that you would like to discuss, you're always welcome to drop in. Uh, in our uh, uh, chat here, uh, we can we can we can always uh, bring you know some other discussions around people and culture because it is such an important uh, you know topic for us. And uh, as business leaders, it's very important that we drive our company together with uh, people like yourself um, uh, in 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 the right direction. So thank you very much for uh, spending a Friday afternoon with us. And uh, uh, we look forward to talking to you again soon in one of our other, uh, you know, what do we call them? Lead with DX episodes. Yeah, thank you so much, Boss Lars, Boss Wasanta, for having me also. I enjoyed our chat. Okay, thank you. Take care. Have a yeah, great day ahead. Take care, boss and I look forward to Kahoot in the evening and beating everybody. <laughs> Bye. You, Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to rate and review our podcast and be sure to subscribe to get the latest updates. Let's talk again soon.